go 1.20 experiment memory arenas versus traditional memory management is traditional like managed memory because that would be more traditional right is gar isn't garbage collection modern memory management i don't even know now now you got me all confused Dimitri, but let's find out what you have to say. Uh, Go arenas are an experimental feature. The API and implementation is completely unsupported, and the Go team makes no guarantees about a compatibility or whether it will even continue to exist in any future release or future release. Awesome. Okay, this seems exciting. This is exciting. This is some cutting-edge Go, people. All right, Go uh, 1.20 introduces an experimental concept of arenas. Exciting. For memory management, which can be used to improve performance of your Go programs. In this blog post, we'll look at it. What are arenas? How do they work? How can you determine if your program could benefit from arenas? How do we use, let's see, how we used arenas to optimize our services? So this is super exciting because, again, if you can make Go slightly faster, like it's already, it, Go is a super simple language to get right, get it shipped, and move on. So if you can make it even slightly more faster, like that'd be crazy. All right, because memory is a huge churn on any system. Memory is going to be one of your biggest causes for things being slow. Let's see. What are memory arenas? Uh, Go is a programming language that utilizes garbage collection, meaning that the runtime automatically manages memory allocation and deallocation for the programmer. This eliminates the need for ma manual memory management, but it comes with a cost. Absolutely. The Go runtime must keep track of every object that is allocated, leading to the increased performance overhead. Yep, classic. And then it also has to find out which ones can be cleaned up. In, let's see. In certain scenarios, such as when an HTTP uh, server process, processes requests with large protobuf blobs, which contain many small objects. This can result in Go or in the Go runtime spending a significant amount of time tracking each of those individual allocations and then deallocating them. As a result, this also causes significant performance overhead. One thing I don't know about Go that's true in JavaScript is that like everything is its own object. Therefore, like a map with maps in it or an object with maps in it are actually two separately tracked items. So I'm not sure if that's true in Go or not. I, I don't know. So anyways, arenas offer a solution to this problem by reducing the overhead associated with many smaller allocations. In this protobuf uh, blob example, a large chunk of memory, an arena, can be allocated before parsing, enable, enabling, blah, blah, before parsing, enabling all parse objects to then be placed within an arena and tracked as a collective unit. Once parsing is completed, the entire arena can be freed at once. Okay, so this is like, effectively, in some sense, you're saying that this object can only be referenced by certain amount of items, and they're all in one single group, so it's very, very simple. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. This is kind of like a cool concept. I like it. Okay, so garbage collector, yeah, they have all these individual objects versus just have them all in one. Okay, I like this. Okay, so this is what they mean by an arena. Okay, identifying code that could benefit from arenas. Any code that allocates a lot of small objects could potentially benefit from arenas, but how do you know if your code allocates too many? In our experience, the best way to find out is to profile your program. Yep, nice. Pyroscope. Okay, Pyroscope is one of these. Cool. So they give you like a little arena uh, or allocation. Uh, allocation. I believe they call these icicle graphs because they hang from the top. It's just a flame graph. I call it a flame graph. Okay, just invert it and boom, you got yourself a flame graph. I'm not really sure why we decided to flip flame graphs upside down. But, you know, we we went there, and now look at us. Now look at us. Now we got icicles, okay? I don't understand it. What the hell's happening here? Okay. Uh, the purple uh, nodes in this alloc allocated uh, objects flame graph represent where arenas may be most effective. Oh, interesting. I wonder how that works or why they're colored purple, what makes them that way. Oh, samples. There's a lot of samples. Objects in RAM. There's a lot of objects in RAM. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, you can see the majority of allocations, this many, come from one area of code. Oh, okay, so it's this one right here? Or are you talking about this one? Or are you talking about this one? I'm not sure which one they're talking about, but somewhere in there. Usually what, how I read this is this one is the one that allocated all this. This one is allocated from here to here, and this one allocated from here to here, right? That's how I'd read it. Given that it represents 65% of allocations, this is a good candidate for using arenas. But is there enough of a performance benefit to be gained by cutting down these allocations? Let's take a look at the CPU profiler. Okay, so it does look like you're getting the same kind of uh, area right here. Okay, exciting. Purple nodes in this uh, CPU flame graph represents potential for performance improvements. All right, let's go. A few things stand out. The problem or the program spends a lot of CPU time in the same insert stack A function. Okay, so there could be, there could be some gains. 
Uh, is it the memory that's causing it? If you search for runtime malloc GC, multiple pink nodes at the bottom, you'll see that the function is called frequently in various different places and takes about 14% of our total execution time. So this is typically how I do this for node. Node, I'll look for major and minor GC, and I will look for how much of the program's time am I spending in uh, major or minor GC? And that's really your garbage collection win. Now, where this makes a huge win is inside of requests, right? Inside of a server. Because once your server can, can reduce that, it actually makes a disproportionately huge effect in how much you actually get done. Because a single request, all the, the, the problem why is that it's like a multiple, right? So in, in Node, when a single request hits with a garbage collection, all other requests that are waiting all get hit with the same garbage collection. So a 200 millisecond stop isn't just a 200 millisecond for a singular request. It's a 200 millisecond for the 10 requests in there. So the amount of speed you gain by reducing garbage collection goes up significant amounts inside of a node application. That's why, you know, that's why garbage collections are a really good thing to think about. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's the same in Go. I don't know exactly how Go works, but if it also has freeze the world garbage collection, then you could argue the exact same thing. Every single one of those will all have to freeze, and therefore your a 14% isn't just 14%. It could be 140%, right? You don't know how much it will actually improve your response time and all that. About 5% of the CPU time is spent in runtime, a uh, big mark worker. Okay, awesome. So in theory, if we optimize all of our allocations in this program, we could cut about 14% plus 5%, 19% CPU time. This would translate in 90% uh, cost savings and latency improvement for all of our customers. In practice, it's unlikely that we could truly get those numbers down to zero, but this is still a significant chunk of work. Yep. Okay, optimizations we made. If you're interested in following along, there's a public pull request for uh, Pyroscope repository that you can use as a reference. To begin, we created a wrapper component that is responsible for dealing with allocations of slices or structs. If arenas are enabled, this component allocates slices using uh, an arena. Otherwise, it uses a standard make function. We do this by using a build tags. Okay, I don't know much about build tags and go. This allows for easy switching between arena allocations and standard allocations at build time. Okay, perfect. So there's no runtime overhead is what they're saying. It just chooses one or the other. Perfect. Then we added initialization and cleanup calls for our arenas around the parser code. After that, we replaced ang uh, regular make calls with make calls from our wrapper component. Finally, we built Pyroscope with arenas enabled and gradually deployed it to our production environment. Okay. Let's see. Uh, flame graph with the represented TP uh, CPU time per function. Is this supposed to be the same as this one? I mean, it looks like the same, right? So 13%. 13%. Okay. Okay. The flame graph above represents a profile after we've implemented the changes. You can see that many of the runtime malloc calls are now gone. I couldn't see them before. I guess I'd have to kind of run through this. Is there a way to like easy? Oh, is this one over here? Yeah. Okay. So is this one 4%? Or oh, is all pink that? Okay. So all pink. Okay. So all pink is allocation stuff. Okay. So now pink is all in one nice little area. I mean, I can't really tell if it's different. I'd have to use, I don't know how to do searchings. I don't know how to use this thing well. Anyways, uh, the flame graph uh, above represents a profile after we've implemented the changes. You can see that many of the runtime malloc GC calls are gone, but are now replaced with arena-specific equivalent. You can also see that the garbage collection overhead is cut in half. It's hard to see the exact amount of savings from solely looking at the flame graphs, but when looking at our Grafana dashboard, uh, which combines our flame graphs with C CPU utilization from AWS metrics, we saw an approximate 8% reduction in CPU usage. This translates into an 8% cost savings for our cloud build particular services. Well, that's only if you can technically scale it correctly, right? I think you have to be at a pretty good amount. But look at that. That's cool, right? Like, that means you can handle a lot more requests. What I'd really like to see is the latency, or not the latency, uh, the round trip times. What do you do with the 50 percentile? What happens to the 50 percentile and the 75th percentile? Because the, the 99th will probably remain near the same, right? The 99th and the 99.9. .9, those probably all remain the same but like the 50 percentile or the 75th percentile how much do you shrink that back you could actually see a, a very significant percentage shrink back uh, this may not seem like a lot but it's important to note that this is a service that has already been optimized quite a bit for example the protobuf parser that we use doesn't allocate any extra memory at all garbage collection overhead five percent is also lower end of the spectrum for our services we think that there's a lot more room for improvement other than parts of the code base, and so we're excited to continue to experiment with arenas. This is actually really cool. This is super cool. 
Now I want to play with it. Damn it. I'm supposed to be studying for HTMX and OCaml, and now I want to go play with Go all of a sudden. Right? Uh, Trade-offs. While arenas can provide performance benefits, it's important to consider the trade-offs before using them. The main drawback using arenas is that you use arenas, you now have to manage memory manually. And if you're not careful, this leads to serious problems. Absolutely. Failing to properly free memory can lead to memory leaks. I know, but this is a problem with all maps, right? So, I mean, you still have this exact same problem in any long-living map. Uh, attempting to access an object from a previous, previously freed arena may cause program crashes. Absolutely. Classic, really. Uh, here's our recommendation. Only use arenas in critical code paths. Do not use them everywhere. Good, good call. Profile your code before and after using arenas to make sure you're adding arenas in areas that... Uh, they can provide most benefit. Yep. Uh, definitely profile your code before and find where the memory is being churned the most, right? Uh, even Node has this. You can add object pools to Node, and you can see huge performance benefits by looking where you allocate the most amount of memory. And what I found, especially with, like, callback objects, it's really, really good to use, like, bound functions and all that. It's very, very good. Hog stack. I know. I'm very excited for the hog stack. The hog or the gog stack. Mm. Uh, pay close attention uh, to the life cycle of the objects created in the arena. Make sure you don't leak them to other components. Yep. So you definitely have to have internal de uh, implementation details. Use defer a free to make sure. Yes. Beautiful. Use clone to clone objects back to the heap. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, the other major drawback at the moment is Go arenas are experimental feature. The API and the implementation is completely unsupported, and the Go team makes no guarantee about backwards compatibility or about compatibility or whether it will even continue to exist in future releases. I think... I think it's really exciting, though. I, I really do hope they kind of pursue this because I really love the idea of having escape hatches to ma manually ma uh, manage your own memory because it is such a huge benefit when it is a benefit. You know, for the most part, a lot of the things you do is super ephemeral. You don't care. But there are those few times where it's just like, if I could manage memory right here, I could, like, eliminate half my program's, like, running time just for this, like, this one thing. I have this exact thing right now, and I wish I could just man. So what I do in JavaScript, I kid you not, what I do in JavaScript at my job right now is I do this stupid stuff where I'll be, like, const get, you know, you know items equals some sort of awaiting and getting this thing, right? I get some sort of uh, array back, right? This returns uh, an array of, you know, something, right? Uh, something, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I have to go through it, right? I do some sort of while items uh, length, right? Something that looks like this and do items pop because then I'm reducing it one at a time. And then at the end, I go items equals null because I have to, which means that I have to use a let here. And it's all complicated in one part because I actually use too much memory. And then by doing this and importing GC and enforcing GC, I can keep memory down. Like, this is crazy what I have to do, but my program goes to 8 gigabytes sometimes, or I can keep it at 200 megabytes by enforcing manual memory management in Node, which is totally the worst thing ever, and I hate it, and I have to write stupid code like this, but I do, because that's what I have to do, and I don't want to do it, right? I wish I had better off. I wish I had more things, right? Anyways. The Go team has received a lot of feedback about arenas, and we'd uh, like to address some of the concerns that we've seen from the community. Most frequently mentioned issue with arenas is that they make the language more complicated by adding an implicit and not immediately obvious way for programs to crash. Absolutely. One positive thing about Go is that Go does not uh, want complexity. And there's something about that that is very beautiful in of itself. Even if you don't like it, it's still beautiful. Most of the criticism is well-founded but misdirected. We are not anticipating arenas becoming widespread. Uh, we view arenas as a powerful tool, but one that only uh, is suitable for specific situations. In our view, arenas should be included in the standard library. However, their usage should be discouraged, much like the usage of unsafe, reflect, or seagull. This is really it. This is perfect. Our experience with arenas has been very positive, and we were able to show that arenas can significantly reduce the amount of time spent in garbage collection and memory allocations. The experiment described in this article focused on a single, already highly optimized service, and we were still able to squeeze 8% extra performance by using arenas. We still think that many users can benefit a lot more from arenas. Absolutely. If you don't have an optimized one you're just creating wild objects, you could really get some good stuff. In addition uh, to that, we also find that arenas are easier to implement compared to other optimizations that we have tried in the past, such as using buffer pools. Pools are very hard to use. Pools are super easy to leak. Or writing custom allocation-free proto-buff uh, proto parsers. This is like ultra-duper-duper hard. <laughs> and compared to the other types of optimizations, uh, they share the same drawbacks but provide more benefits. So in our view, arenas have a net win. I am completely on this one right here. This is like... 
totally a W right here because this makes perfect sense because it is so hard to do the other optimizations. Pooling objects is non-trivial. It's easy to get it wrong. It's easy to leak memory. It's easy to do the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, pools are easy if you ignore exceptions. Yeah, they're simple. And also, oopsie daisy, stale data, and some other things that accidentally happen, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, arenas are a powerful tool for optimizing Go programs, particularly in the scenarios where your program spends significant amount of times parsing large protobuf or JSON blobs. They have the potential to provide significant performance improvements, but it also is important to note that they are an experimental feature, and there's no guarantees of compatibility. Yep. Uh, all right. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful article. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, this was fantastic. Really liked it, and I'm actually pretty excited about Go. To me, this is uh, this just makes Go more appealing. Because what this says to me is that Go isn't fine with 95% performance. They want that 99. And if you can get 99, you're looking creamy smooth, right? Because with JavaScript, you cannot do this, right? Like, this is just not currently a thing for JavaScript, and nor do I really want it in JavaScript. Because anything that is done with JavaScript tends to get wildly abused. You know what I mean? Wildly abused. So, this is beautiful. This is actually really beautiful. And I think Greg, is Leptos Greg here? Is Leptos Greg here? Greg, I'm using some more Leptos tonight. I don't know if you know that, but dude, I'm going deep on Leptos, Greg. Look at this. Look at this beautiful stuff. I'm just about to grab some data from Terso, but I'm using a local file client, which makes it even better, right? Just grabbing it from that example. Love it. Anyways, Greg, you're a great guy. Great guy, Greg. Everybody, give great guy, Greg, big claps. Everybody, great guy. The name is I really do love Leptos, and it is solely the reason why I'm continuing to use Rust no matter what. I think I would switch to OCaml and use OCaml for my backends, but at this point, I still use Rust because of Leptos, because Leptos is that amazing. A gen.